Hello, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. Today I am going to do a review of a new set of Color by Number books that have come out. I hauled these this month and I don't usually do a review of books that I haul until after I post my end of the month haul. But I am starting to see people picking these books up, uh, particularly this, the Magic and Fantasy one. Obviously, it sounds the most interesting of the three titles, most widely interested topic, too. So I thought it would be uh, opportune for me to put my review up now so that you can uh, listen to it and take what I have to say and use your own judgment on whether you want to buy these books right now or not. So, <clears throat> they look really interesting. The Amazon websites, um, they list the author of these books as Melanie Mosley. The book itself does not mention an author or a publisher anywhere. Not on the inside pages, not on the back cover. There's no advertising for other books on the back that gives us the gives us the artist or anything. So first off I think that gives us the indication that Melanie Mosley is a made up name. Whether they start adding that to the books or if they are going to come up with a company name at some time. I think they should have done that before they printed their books. These books have obviously had some work put into them. They weren't just thrown together. And it all appears to be original work too. So I'd say they have a viable product here which they have introduced too soon. So let's take a look at these. Um, I've done two pictures in them, so you'll get a look at that in a minute. Let's take Magic Fantasy. They're all set up exactly the same. Let's get that out of our way. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I have to stand up to do that. Just one idea to be able to see them all laid out like that. Okay, so. So they have nice glossy front and back covers. The back cover actually gives you some information about the book. Um, the title tells you there's 30 in here. That it's printed single sided, the size of the pages. And it says mosaic color by number coloring book for adults with enchanting stress relieving designs and mystery mythical lore geometric puzzles. It sounds to be printed by someone who knows English, and the backs of the other books say the same thing. They have ISBN codes, and those aren't free. So we open up, and we don't have any more information if we're looking for the publisher or the illustrator. And then I find this quite amusing. We have a copyright page and it's copyrighted in 2020. It has all the normal information that your copyright statement has, but it isn't copyrighted to anybody. So this is useless. Um, it's just been put down there. It hasn't really been copyrighted or if it really has been copyrighted, they don't want us to know who it was copyrighted to because you can't just say copyright 2020 and not have any name. Usually a copyright will say copyright Bob Jones 2020 because Bob Jones holds the copyright. So nobody, according to this, nobody holds this copyright. And then we get straight into the puzzles and I have done the first one in this, I believe. There we go. It, uh, turns out to be uh, a nice picture, uh, kind of like a comical 
comical uh, Bigfoot or something. Remember, this book is mythical creatures and fantasy. Well, what is it again? Magic and fantasy. So I've looked at the other pictures, and they're not all comical like this. Just this first one is. And it's got some work in it and everything. So, I mean, looking at this, it looks pretty good. But there's a lot of problems. A lot of problems with doing this. First of all, where's the color palette? There's a color test page. This book belongs to. Well, we've already looked at the back. Maybe it's the last page in the book. Hmm. There's a color palette there for something. So, there's no actual color palette to tell you what the colors are in this book and what the colors look like. Uh, that can be okay if they're going to be using basic colors, okay? I know the difference between light, dark, and medium blue. Oh, but it would be good to have one on there. So, I'm looking at the first page, and I'm still saying, okay, you don't have a color palette for the book, but where's my color palette for this? Well, after a little bit of confusement, because I did open the book up backwards, and I don't know, I've, it seems like there's a lot of people like me who flip books backwards. So I opened up here, and I thought, oh, there's a picture missing, because here's the color palette, and there's no picture. And how aw, I must have gotten a misprint or something, right? Then I start looking through the pictures here, and, you know, I'm kind of making out what they are and, and everything. Then, um, yeah, so I stop at a point right here, and I, I'm looking at the picture, right? And, you know, and I'm seeing, oh, this is nines down here, and this is eights, that's the background, and, you know, trying to get a look at what the picture is, but I can't make it out. Some of these you can make out what it is, and some you can't, which I like. I like not being able to fully see what it is. And I go over here, and I'm like, well, the color palette only goes to six. And there's a nine here. And I'm looking. Oh, no, nine's the biggest number, but where's seven, eight, and nine? I said, they haven't put it on there. So, turn it to the back here. Oh, I notice there's nine colors right there. Hmm, wonder if that's for this one. Let's take a look. Looks like I can see a head up there, and the face is done in number two. Let's see. This one says gray, so that'd be pretty weird. Peach. Hmm. Yep. This looks like it's the palette for the page on front, which means that this is not missing a picture. This is the palette for this one. And yep, that's right. That's how these go. The palettes for the pictures are different, completely different, and yet they're on the back. Now the book does seem to use the same colors throughout. It doesn't give them the same numbers throughout. It has different numbers, but they do seem to be the same colors. Let's take a look at the color names. Let's get a good one. No, I know there's a really good one in here that I was looking at. Near the beginning. Oh no, I must have been further on. Okay, I'm just going to find one that really illustrates my point. <laughs> find a big one. Hold on. One thing you can say is that they're not very large palettes in this book. Maybe it was in. Maybe it was in the other book. Okay, let's get out the other book that I've done. I did one in Forest Wild Life. Same thing, same beginning, same problem. No, that was the, that was the color palette I used. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in this one. Okay, so... This is the kind of colors that you're going to get 
that you're going to get in your things. Iron gray. Okay. Red, yellow, gray. Okay, gray. Pearl gray. Abalone gray. Lava gray. Maroon. Yellow gold. Anchor gray. Steel gray. Cantaloupe. Okay, so can someone tell me what color cantaloupe is? How about lava gray? Does a color immediately come to your mind when you think lava gray? What about abalone gray? I don't know what an abalone is. And part of me thinks the word is abalone. Or is that, or am I thinking baloney? <laughs> Just kind of like move the bee over here. Yeah, I, I got no idea what colors those are. So that's a problem right there is that they have, where they have gotten their colors from, I do not know. Um, uh, one of the other things that I hauled this month was I finally got my set, uh, self a pack of Crayola pencils. Everybody seemed, seemed to have them, so I thought I'd give them a go and see why they're not so terrible. So I thought, oh, well maybe they went and used the Crayola pencil color numbers, because I know there are books that have done that. So I uh, went and had a look, and nope. <laughs> So is I know they're not I know they're not Prismacolor colors because all their grays are percentages. And also, let's say you're sitting there and you're an experienced uh, colorist and you've got you know your you got your sharpies and bix and whatever you know your permanent markers out because they're good for doing this kind of thing. You got some nice fine tips. So, if you've got your Bix and your Sharpies and your stuff there, tell me if you are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven grays. Are you going to have seven different grays? I counted mine and I don't. And I have a lot of sets of permanent markers. Both, if I combine them, the ultra fines with the fines. Yeah, I got, I've got several different brands there, and I do not have seven different grays. So that's the other problem as well. There's another page in here that has pinks like that. There's like, you know, eight, nine, ten, or more pinks in it, and they've all got strange names. Well, I mean, look at this. This is a little one. There's your picture right there. Hmm. Looks interesting. Some kind of winged animal. And we start with yellow and we end with gray. And then we've got cinnamon, chai brown, and rest brown. So we've got three browns, and I have no idea what color those would be. I can, I can pick... For the rust brown, I'm thinking, okay, we're, we'll go with a red brown. But I have no idea what colors to pick for cinnamon or chai brown. I've drunk chai tea, and it's no... The color's not that much different than other teas. I eat cinnamon, but I don't know what color it is without sugar. Oh, here we go. This is the one. Get a load of the pinks in this one. And it's for this, and it's the picture of some sort of cat, wild cat, with some sort of thing on its head. Rose pink, rosewood pink, salmon pink, taffy pink, peach pink, fuchsia pink, watermelon pink, coral pink, bubblegum pink, and crepe pink. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Oh, and here I can see we have a picture of an owl. Those are fun. I like owls. Let me see. I just have to go get out my tortilla brown, wood brown, espresso brown, brunette brown, orange, tawny brown, mocha brown, umber brown, wheat brown, and black. Yeah. 
what am I going to do with that? I guess we can go look these up and see what colors they are because I did that with one color in here. It was a Dodger blue. I have no idea what Dodger blue is. So I went online and I looked up Dodger blue and hey, it's a color. It gave me the RGB code or whatever it is and the other kind of code and then there was a square filled with the color. So maybe if I put these colors in, I'll get those too. Do you want to do that for every color you're going to use in a color my number book? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. All right, so the setup here needs work on it. They need to put the color palettes on the opposing page, and that's very easily done because all they got to do is take, it, take the color test page, put it on one of the three blank pages at the back, and then move over move over their color palettes one and we know this is all done via computer so not that big a deal so they could easily do that now the second thing they got to do is take a look at where they were getting their numbers their color palette names from and translate that into light blue medium blue blue a dark blue that's usually what you're going to have on your most complex um, charts. You might put in a pastel blue if you wanted one even lighter. But normally they start okay, normally they start with light, medium, and dark blue. And then you can add to the well, you can put a blue in there. You can put a pastel blue at the end. You could put a um, navy blue after dark blue. We'll get the we will get the idea. We don't even need to see those colors to be able to put the, the markers together. So yeah, they need to translate that into proper uh, name colors that everybody can understand. So if we get down to like actually doing the pictures, if we go, okay, I can do that. I can do that. We go ahead, of course I didn't find that out until after I started doing this, but this one is done with uh, permanent markers for the insides and um, a pencil crayon for the background. I believe it was a Prisma Sky Blue, if there's one. Oh no, no it wasn't. It was, it was Sky Blue Arteza. And then I used a black marker to outline the main figure. So... I used peach, brown, tan, baby blue. Great. Those colors I can get. Now, the problem, the problem with actually going in and doing the colors is there's a lot of spaces that don't have numbers. They're all positioned somewhere where if you're used to doing color by numbers, you can easily tell which it's supposed to be. And even if you left it blank until the end, you would be able to pick out which color it's supposed to be. So there, you can figure out what color those spaces without a number in them are, but I wouldn't ask that of a beginning colorist. Uh, you know, I think it'd be someone in my degree, someone who is an advanced colorist who has who that's not a chore for. I mean, it was no big deal to me because, in, you know, in pretty much all color by numbers, you'll find a few that don't have a number in it. And, you know, if it, it'll be stuck in the middle here and like, oh, okay, they skipped one. So it's brown, you know, no, no big deal. And sometimes there's empty ones because they're supposed to be white. Of course, this doesn't give us a this doesn't give us a color palette, so we don't know if they've included white. It's not one of the colors that ever shows up in the chart. <clears throat> so that, and then the other thing, which I think is one of the biggest mistakes, is we have to imagine, you know, because I don't make these puzzles, but I imagine, and I think the average person will as well, that it's done by computer and uh, that I would imagine they have a computer program, uh, you know, a, a 
an art program and they put in a few parameters or click and select a section or whatever and then push a button and it will graphite graphylate <laughs> I might know the name graphylate the section you know because the back the back portion is all six sided figures are they one two three four yeah the background is all made up of six sided figures one two three one two three four five six yeah it is it's all six sided figures in the back now on the inside one two three four yeah, it looks like it's six sided figures too one two four that's a five two three four five one two three four okay so there are some they're mostly fives with a couple of sixes in there so they probably put either five or six whatever you know I'm just trying to think of how they made it but I know it's done on a computer so what has happened is they've ended up with spaces like I'm going to zoom you right in now so you can see these yourself. And I'll show it to you on an uncolored pi picture. Okay. So I'm going to show you on an uncolored picture. Okay. Where are we? Can you see my finger? Okay. There we go. See this little bit right here? And give you better if I use a pointer. So this little bit right here, I've got a little bit of a triangle stuck on the end that has been sectioned off and it's too small for a number so it doesn't have a number. When what should have happened is that some, this book needs to have work done on it at the editing phase. You know, like let's call it a proof. That's a book that's been written and you know, they've decided where stuff's going to be. It's been typed out and it's been put into book format, but it hasn't been edited. Somebody's going to go through that book, fix all the misspellings, fix all the words that are interposed and such. This needs, these, these pictures need fixing. Because right here, they need to take that out. There should not be a division right there so that we're coloring this piece for and stopping and having a tiny little triangle on the end with no color and the space being really hard to color in. It's so tiny. should just get rid of that and make that one piece. Now that's not the worst of this happening. Look, here's one that's even worse. Here, are we on screen? Here we go. So this piece comes here and then, well, it looks like it comes here and here and then stops. It, whether it's going that or it's going this way and stops. It's a, we've got another triangle and these things do make triangles. So it's been cut off there. It's been, you know, the tail's been gone like that. It's been cut off and it's made another, and it's made another section here, which is a, really tall skinny triangle with no number in it again but if I look the, this is a this is a number four this is a number four this is a number four and if I follow along this line it belongs in the number fours so why not take that separation off and have us color the whole piece for you know there's there's a lot of those things and then you end up with things like this right here. Where are we? There's just this teeny weeny little triangle stuck up there with no number on it. It could very easily be part of something else and here we have here we have a tri little teeny triangle like I said but underneath of it is a half circle which is you're just gonna have to tickle that with the top of your pencil and you're just gonna have to hope your fine liner will fit, will, will just dance over the top of that to get some ink on it. It's so tiny. So there's a lot of these little spaces that don't need to be there if the puzzle had been edited. If somebody had gone around and found all these tiny spaces and 
connected them to what they were supposed to be, and then the number could be in there too. So those are the problems that I have found by doing one of these, and or two of them, and taking a look through the book to see if my problems are duplicated. So this one, let's go back to the one I showed you. Okay. So this one right here, I had a lot of problems with not being numbers and having to figure out which color it belonged to because I didn't know what it was and even if I knew what it was, you know, you can't tell where the lines are going to go at a certain point because it's not, not drawn clearly. So especially when we got to these little these little bumps, these little triangles, I had a ton of those because you see he's got his fur sticking out like that. So they made a lot of these into separate little separate little spaces that were hard to do. And yes, like in here, there's this teeny weeny little space right there. So you know, is it blue or is it or is it brown? Because if we draw straight up those lines it makes our shape, but it's been cut there. And there was one that I decided I had actually done wrong. Yes, right here. I've done these. Or, oh, can you even see me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see me. I guess you haven't been able to see me doing all this thing here. Okay. So here's all the, here's all the tri triangles that I was talking about. I forgot I was on, on, um, deep focus. Let me, let me pull you out so I can just go over the ends of these. I don't want this to be uh, amazingly long. I've got three minutes left and it's a half hour, which I think is long enough to find out about these. Um, yeah, so all the little triangles I was talking about, and right here I have done the wrong color. Now that it's all done, I can see that these were supposed to be knuckles, and I should have done them flesh color, but while I was doing it, it followed the shape of the knee. So I thought his hand was on his... I thought his hand... Oh, how do I get on screen? Which way? Yeah. I thought his hand was pushed up against his leg, and, you know, his fingers weren't showing. And so I colored that in skin color, I mean the brown color, since it easily went around, but now I see it should have been flesh. So I had a lot of problems doing that one, though I, though I didn't get a headache doing it. I'm, as an experienced color by numberist, I uh, figured it out fairly easily. Now here's the next one that I've done. It's not quite finished. I have to go around the main figure with uh, with black. Now this one you can see is a lot easier than the one that we did and therefore I had a lot less problems but this one had an awful lot of the little tiny triangles with the spaces missing. Like there, there was not the spaces missing, numbers missing. There were numbers missing all over the background in this one and up here was a mess. Like if you, if you'd never done a color by number, it would have, you would have wondered what was going on there. So, yeah, the, and, and up here too, they have one, this is, this should be one shape, not one, two, three, four shapes. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it. My advice is unless you are an experienced color by numberist, don't buy these. Now I'm not saying that it that they could not be good books because I think they can. I'm going to I'm keeping mine. I decided not to send them back cuz I wanted to do uh I wanted to do a review for you and it's a learning experience that, you know, when you buy stuff that's brand new out and nobody else has reviewed it yet you're not gonna know what you're gonna get and yeah you can try them find some that have you know four or five colors and try those ones but be aware of the problems that you're gonna come into 
uh, but I advise against buying these unless you're an experienced color by numberist and you want to give yourself a challenge by uh, facing all those problems. Uh, I do think it's a good idea for us to be reviewing this with low ratings and explaining the problems. I think that's how it'll get the publisher to make the changes because they're not allowing themselves to be contacted. So, uh, there you go. I hope that was of some help to someone. And I will see you next on my weekly vlog, I guess. So, until then, bye-bye.